Hello to everybody out there in Periscope land. This is Brother Ed, and I'm going to attempt to do the next Periscope Part 15. This is Eternal Security, Apostolic Meltdown Part 15. <clears throat> Guys, this is an important topic because this will determine whether or not that you have peace in your brain when you go to bed at night. This is an important topic because this will determine whether or not that that you trusted in the fundamental gospel that the Bible calls salvation through Christ alone. And if you don't believe what Christ has did on the cross for your sins and that he paid it all, it's a total attack on Jesus Christ and the gospel in which I would even question if you're a Christian. If you cannot believe in eternal security, I would challenge if you're even a Christian. That's the. This is how important this topic is, guys. Now, earlier earlier today, I was uh, nice enough to do another Periscope about this, and what I did was I covered uh, some extremely good points that you need to consider. And uh, number one, I covered, and I'll just kind of briefly go through this. If you want to watch the last Periscope, you can hit that, okay? Um, number one, salvation is believing in Christ. Number two, we are not saved by works. Number three, salvation is a free gift. Number four, salvation is a new birth. Number five, you become a child of God. Number six, nothing can separate us from the Father. Number seven, Jesus will never leave us. Number eight, we already have eternal life. Number nine, Jesus will not cast you out. 10, we are complete in him. And then this is where we're at now. We're, I think we're 11 or 12 right now. We are perfected forever. We're not for perfected until the next time we sin. We're perfected forever. It's important you know that, guys. And now since we've said that, let's prove that scripturally, that I'm perfected forever. First, first before... um. What does that mean? Perfected forever. It means that you have eternal security. It means that you can't lose it. Jesus paid it all. And, and perfected just means that there is, when we stand before God, we'll be spotless. We'll, Jesus made us spotless before God, even though we still sin. When God looks at us, now, now, now hear me out. When God looks at us, he looks at Christ in you. He made you righteous inside. Now, no, just because we're made righteous doesn't mean that we're out there do, and, and we're completely righteous like Jesus Christ. What, is, what does it mean to be made righteous? It means that when God looks at me down from heaven, he says, no, I, I don't see any sin in that person, even though he's sinning. He's saying that person is righteous because he's saved by Jesus Christ. Now, now, don't confuse that with the life that we have to live in this body of flesh in which when we do sin, we need to fix our relationship with God in the sense of this body of flesh, which we have 1 John chapter 1 that says if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This is dealing with saved people that they're already saved because God says you have Christ in you, you're saved. But now we have to live in this body of flesh and now this flesh messes up, right? We mess up, you know, we yield to the flesh, we yield to the desires of the flesh and what do we need to do when we do that? We need to confess our sins and he is faithful and just to forgive us, not to save us again, but to, so we can have fellowship with him again. 1 John chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 is all dealing with our fellowship with God, not losing our salvation, okay? Quick question. Uh, uh, try to go off track a little bit. But is there such thing as a Holy Ghost? Yes. Yes. Um, I'll give you the passage here. Um, let's go to 1 John. 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. Okay, I'm going to flip the screen, okay? So you can see it. So just to show you that the Bible says that, that, that it's there, okay? So you know that it's what the Bible says, okay? So here it is. 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. Hopefully my screen clears up. That's what I'm praying for right now. Lord, please let this screen clear up so we can see this and learn your word. Amen. 
Okay, guys, it's not clearing up. So, okay, there it goes. Cleared up. Amen. For there are how many that bear record in heaven? How many? Three. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. So, uh, Miss Brittany, hopefully I answered your question. Yeah, there is a Holy Ghost, and these, these three are one. And um, we believe in one God, right, triunity. Uh, Brandon got it correct. Triunity. We believe in the triune God. It's three in one. Now, how do I explain that? It's, re it, it's, it's, it's impossible to understand the triunity of God. How can he be three persons and yet one? And that's where the Muslims get hung up. That's where the, the, uh, a lot of the, the modalism people from these apostolic churches, how they can't understand it. But we believe as Bible-believing Christians, we believe the Bible. And the Bible says these three are one. And we believe in one God. But yet he manifests himself to mankind in three persons. Hopefully that makes sense, guys. So with that being said... <clears throat> I want to cover this as far as eternal security. I know we got hung off topic a little bit, but it was a very good question. Um, so the Holy Ghost can come upon someone like in church when people say that they have the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost glorifies the Son. Here, I'll show you this really quick. Uh, Brandon, I'll, I'll explain this to her really quick because it's a she's asking valid questions. This is very good. Very good questions, by the way. Um, I'm going to go to Ephesians chapter 1, okay? Ephesians chapter 1. Now... Let's take a look at this, guys. Oh, oh, hold on. Okay, there it goes. Ephesians chapter 1. Now, we're going to go down to verse 12, okay? Because we're going to get some context here. That we should be to the praise of His glory, who what? Who, hold on, who first trusted in Christ, okay? Now, this is important. you got to remember this, okay? In whom ye also trusted, that's past tense, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. So you heard that Christ died for your sins. He was buried and rose again the third day. That's the gospel of your salvation. In whom also after that ye believe. So you got to believe it, right? In this case, you already believed it. Ye were what? Sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. That's the Holy Ghost. You were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. So the moment you believe what Jesus did on the cross for your sins and he rose again the third day, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. But what do most people say when they're at church that are charismatic or that are apostolic? They'll tell you that you have to believe first and then you have to try to speak in tongues in which the Holy Ghost comes down in cloven tongues of fire and then it comes upon you and then you can speak in these tongues and then you have the Holy Ghost. That's not the Bible. That happened one time in the book of Acts at, at Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. And that, that, doesn't, that happened one time, never again. Because what we read in later on in the book of Acts is there ain't no tongues of fire coming down on the Gentiles. Okay? So it's very important that we clarify that. And so when the moment you believe in Jesus Christ, you're saved forever. The Holy Ghost comes down to dwell within you forever. Now, even when you sin... The Holy Ghost is still there. Did the, okay, I'm going I'm to prove that, okay? The Holy Ghost is still there when you're sinning. Why? Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, okay? Now I'm going to flip the screen, okay, guys? Here it goes. Where's my... Uh, okay, there it is. Okay, now what does it say? And grieve not the... What? The Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Well, obviously, if you're grieving the Holy Spirit, you're still sealed unto the day of redemption. You still have the Holy Spirit, but you're grieving it. That's what happens when you sin. You grieve the Holy Spirit, but it doesn't change the fact that you are sealed unto the day of redemption. That's Ephesians 4.30. You see that? Now I'm going to give you another one. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19. Look what it says. Look, let, let's get a little context here. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Now look what it says. Quench not the spirit. Okay, question. If, if there has to be a command in 1 Thessalonians 5.19 to tell you not to quench the spirit, 
can the Spirit be quenched? And the answer would have to be yes. So the Holy Spirit can be quenched, the Holy Spirit can be grieved, but He'll never leave you. The Bible says you're sealed until the day of redemption. Okay, guys, hopefully um, I answered your question. I'm, I'm hoping I did. Um, very good question, by the way. Um, is, a, uh, is it uh, Miss Brittany? Miss Brittany, I hope I answered your question on that. Um, um, let, let me know if you, you didn't understand anything. I want to do my best to explain it the best way I can for you. I know sometimes I, when I'm, when I'm talking, I'm just rambling on and people just ain't, don't have a clue what I'm saying. And I want to do that. I want to be able to be understood. And so um, if there's something you don't understand, just let me know. Just say, hey, hey, Brother Ed, I didn't understand that. You know, just go back and explain that one more time to me, and I'll do it. You wouldn't be rude in doing that. I, I, I want to provoke everybody not, not, you know, not to just let me ramble on and not understanding anything and just accepting whatever I'm saying. I want you guys to ask questions. Yeah, I understand the Holy Ghost thing is just confusing on how people jump around in church. Right and say that it's the Holy Ghost. Right. And I'm telling you, a lot of the charismatic movements that, that say, you know, that have the tongues and all that and, and the healing and all that, you, you, you know what it is? It's, it's, really, it's really hard for people that are being sincere and honest and they're just trying to learn truth. Because I've been to a charismatic church before. I went to, to Faith Temple before in, when I was living in Killeen, Texas. And I went down to that church and they were teaching me that, you know, you know I didn't have the Holy Spirit, you know because I didn't speak in tongues. And if I spoke in tongues, I'd have the evidence of that. And I was, I, I was pretty upset because I wanted to be saved. And, and I didn't want to, I, I, I loved God. I, I, want, I, I believe what Christ did for me on the cross. And they were telling me that wasn't enough. And I was deceived. And they're deceiving me. And, and, and they would tell me like, you know, the Holy Ghost told them to tell me that. And the Holy Ghost told them to do this. And the Holy Ghost told them to do that. And I'm like, man, the Holy Ghost don't tell me to do none of that stuff. How come the Holy Ghost ain't speaking to me audibly? You know, the problem with that, Miss Brittany, is that people were just doing some Academy Award winning acting. And, you know, when you tell them that, they get mad. They, 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 yeah, they, they get mad. And, and you know what they do? They, they, they just they don't want to reason out of the scriptures with you. You know what they do? They're like, you know what? I'm done with you. I'm done with you. I don't want to talk to you no more. And, and they're like, you know what? I rebuke you in, in 1 Corinthians 5.5. 5. And, and then they give me a rebuke out of 1 Corinthians 5.5. 5, and they say the Holy Spirit told them to rebuke me out of 1 Corinthians 5.5. 5, but to, to give me over to Satan for destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. I'm like, what is, you don't even know what that verse means. And you say you got the Holy Spirit telling you to, to rebuke me with that verse? Are you serious? No. You know how the Holy Spirit works? It's, it's pretty practical, Miss Brittany. You learn your Bible. You, okay, you, you obviously must have lost your connection there. But in order to know if it's the Holy Spirit or not, this is what you got to do. You don't believe a man that says, okay, you, you, you don't believe a man that, has the, that says he has the Holy Spirit. And, 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 and he's, okay, it, it, it gets confusing, okay? And I'm not trying to confuse you. What do I mean by when a man says he has the Holy Spirit? It means he's saying he has the Holy Spirit in the sense of that he, the Holy Spirit speaks to him and tells him things that are not in this book, okay? For instance, um, you're having troubles right now in your finances. And uh, the Holy Spirit told me to tell you that if you give me more money and, and give me all the money that you have, that you're going to be blessed with more money. And my question when somebody says that is, does it say it in this book? Oh, okay, now, now you're sparking something. Okay, see, that, and that's what I need you to understand, that everything that we do is Bible-believing Christians. Now, you may be a Bible-believing Christian, or you may have never heard of this before, but the reason why we call ourselves Bible-believing Christians is that we test everything out of the Bible. And we don't solely go on what a man says that says he's a man of God. We don't go by what a man says that says he's an apostle or prophet. We, we say, wait a minute, are you, an, are you a real apostle? Then I need to try you by this book. Are you a real prophet? I need to try you by this book. And I'm telling you, everybody that says these things run away from the scriptures. But yet all the while they're saying they believe the Bible. 
I'm working through the Old Testament this summer, finishing up Deuteronomy today. Amen, Floodgate. Praise the Lord. Yeah, you do that. Take accountability for what you what, for what you believe as a Christian and learn it. So I've been to Benny Hinn services, such and and and, and right. The, the, uh, I couldn't read everything. I tried to, to glean something off of what you just said, Miss Brittany. And um, Benny Hinn. Don't let them deceive you. I'm, I, I know that Bible-believing Christians can come across really angry and really mean. And I know sometimes I come across pretty angry and pretty mean. But I want to—I do it in a purpose to help people, not to get them further and further or, or let them go further and further into their sins, following somebody that's going to lead them right into a ditch. I don't want to see anybody follow a blind man. Now, Benny Hinn, my mom and dad, listen to Benny Hinn all the time. And they, 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 they actually believed a lot of stuff that he said. And, and I believe, I used to listen to Benny Hinn a long time ago when, before I actually learned my Bible in truth. And, and the, the problem with that is, is that everything that comes out of Benny Hinn's mouth, I would just suggest that you open up your Bible and test everything he says out of the scriptures. Can I ask you a, a, a serious question with love and a desire for true understanding? I, I, I just don't want to. Okay, go ahead, Floodgate. Um, I was trying to, to explain to Miss Brittany. She was asking a question about Benny Hinn, but I'll, I'll finish your question, uh, uh, Miss Brittany. Seem like I'm trying to be controversial. Um, well, you can ask the question because I'm not one of those guys that block people just because they disagree with what I'm preaching or teaching, okay? Okay, if Benny Hinn can heal, why isn't he at the hospitals healing everyone? And see, and, and my wife, you know, that's my wife on there. She, she poses a great point. Um, if Benny Hinn can heal and he's fl flapping his jacket around, and I'm not being funny, I'm being serious, guys. If he's flapping his jacket around, I've seen it. I've seen him doing it. Then why isn't he at the hospitals right now flapping his jacket around and all these people at the hospitals getting saved? That's where we need the healing, in the hospitals. People that got cancer, people that got AIDS, people that got, you know, all these these diseases like autism. And, and all, all, I mean, why isn't he there healing all those people? And, and why do they need to come to his service to do it? Recommend me a scripture to test. Okay. Um, okay, here's one. Here's one, Miss Brittany. Very good question, guys. You guys are you guys are on point today, man. I'm, I'm getting some real honest questions, and I like that, guys. Even if you don't agree with me, and you keep it straight, you just keep it honest questions. I, I don't I don't care if you know I don't care if you don't agree with me. I, I just we can we can reason this thing out together, guys. So this is really good. Okay, so I'm gonna give you your verse here. Okay, guys. Um, Miss Brittany, um, Mark. Okay, hold on. Let me. Mark, chapter sixteen. And we, we kind of went through this yesterday, guys, a little bit of this apostle stuff, okay? So here it goes, guys. Here it is. Okay, now, Mark 16, 15. Now, first thing we got to find out, Miss Brittany, is who's being addressed and who's talking. And so what do we do? We go back in the scriptures to find out what's going on here. Okay, so what we have is Jesus Christ already resurrected from the dead in Mark 16. He's already resurrected. Now, what's happening is they're being rebuked. The apostles are being rebuked because they didn't believe that by the testimony of Mary and all the others that saw the resurrected Christ, they didn't believe the testimony. And so what happened? See, neither believe they them. Now, now look, afterward, he appeared unto the 11, that's the 11 apostles, as they sat at meat. And look what, look what Jesus did. He upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart. These guys are apostles. And, they, they, and Jesus upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart. Because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. You see that? Now we're getting to our passages. And I'm, I'm telling you, we're going to get to where you need to test these people. Okay? And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and heal every creature. Does it say that? Go ye into all the world and heal every every person that's sick that comes to your ministry. No, it says go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. What did Jesus commission them to do? This is what we call the Great Commission. Jesus said, tell everybody in the whole world that Jesus Christ died on the cross for their sins, was buried and rose again the third day. Now look at the next verse, Miss Brittany. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. So we know baptism doesn't save you, right? This is the verse people go to to prove that baptism does save you. But it says, what damns you? That's the question you need to ask. 
what damns you? Is it not getting baptized or not believing? That's how we go to prove that you're not saved by water baptism. Because what damns you? What will damn you? It will be not believing in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So baptism is just the first act of obedience, which Jesus Christ taught in Mark 16, 16. But it does not save you. You see that? That's how we prove that. Now let's go to the next verse here. Mark 16, 17. And these signs, see the signs right there? These signs shall follow them that believe, right? Now, what do people apply that to? Well, they apply that to everyone that believes. But I beg to differ. This part right here, telling people that Christ died for their sins, was buried and rose again the third day, that was to everyone. Why? Because ye would be to be dealing with everyone, right? Now, these signs shall follow them that believe. Now, I think that this believe right here, which many would disagree with me, would be only applied to the apostles and who was an apostle in the New Testament. Um, no, I, I would, uh, Miss Brittany, I would try your best to try to get a King James Bible. That's, I would try to, I would try to direct you that way, okay? Because um, then you can go along with me because some words contradict. That's why, that's why I'm saying, you know, King James Bible would be the best Bible to get if you want to learn the Bible in doctrine and truth. Because, um, um, Miss Brittany, could you, really quick, and I'll answer your, well, well, we'll cover that in a minute, okay, Miss Brittany, because we're, 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 we're on so many topics right now, okay? I do some are, are just very hard to read. Okay, okay, Miss Brittany, real quick, I'm going to answer that question. After we answer this, you know, you're going to test Benny Hinn, right? We're going to test Benny Hinn right now, okay? Here it is. These signs shall follow them that believe. Now, Benny Hinn says what? That he can cast out devils, right? So he's applying himself to the, to the signs of Mark 16, 17, and 18. Now, here's the problem. If Benny Hinn can cast out devils and Benny Hinn can, can speak with new tongues... Now, has Benny Hinn ever took up serpents? That's the next question you need to ask. He either has all the gifts or he has none of the gifts. This is how we try an apostle. This is how we try somebody that says he can cast out devils. If you say you can cast out devils, the Bible tells me that you have to cast out devils, speak with new tongues, take up serpents, and Miss Brittany, what else? And if they drink any deadly thing... It shall not hurt them. Okay, Benny Hinn, can you cast out devils? Can you speak with new tongues? Well, you haven't showed me you can take up serpents yet. How come you ain't did that yet to prove to us you are who you say you are? And here's the next one. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Okay, uh, Benny Hinn, why don't you prove to everybody that you can uh, drink any deadly thing? Why do we always got to see you uh, casting out devils? Why do we always got to see you speaking in new, in new tongues? Okay, Miss Brittany, I'm going to cover that in a minute, okay? Just bear with me. We're just answering your question right now, okay? Then I'll get to the King James thing really quickly, okay? So look, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. So, so here's the question. Will Benny Hinn, will Benny Hinn, okay, I got my, got my, my double gulp here, okay? Will Benny Hinn put cyanide in the double built gulp and drink it? and live without any medical help. You see what I'm saying? I, I'm not saying put sugar in there. I'm saying let me, let me, testing you, go down to the to the to the doctor, get some cyanide, or I don't, I don't even think they'll they'll release that to you, but get some cyanide from somewhere and let Benny Hinn see me put it in the drink. And let me see him drink it. And it not hurt him. And you know what you'll find? You know what you'll find? He won't do it. Because anybody can say, I cast out devils. I mean, I, I could have one of my church members right here act like they're act like they're they're they have devil possession, and I could say, I could take off my jacket and put my jacket over them, and, and, and they can pretty much get up in their right mind. And I can say, see, see, look what I did. Anybody can do that. And so that's the skepticism that we need to have, right? Now, if he'll do that, if he'll drink that cyanide poison and still live, 
Come on. We always see him all the time doing the casting out devils. We always see him all the time doing the healing, right? No, no. How about somebody that doesn't have a limb? Let me see him put his hand on that person or, or flap his jacket over the person that has no limb and then let that, that limb miraculously appear. How come we don't see stuff like that? Because you know what? He focuses on things that we can't test. Right? Am I right or am I wrong? Does he focus on things that we can't test? I can't test the, the I just have to believe him at face value when he says he cast out a devil. I got to believe him at face value when he says that he healed some, some sickness innerly within a man. No. If you have the gifts, you have all of them or you have none of them. That, that's the test. So let's go back. Let's go back. Now look what it says. They shall take up serpents. Now, come on. I see him do this stuff all the time. I want to see him do this. How come he doesn't have a special TV program where he's throwing himself in a snake pit, getting bit by coral snakes, and then living without any medical help? Come on. You want to prove to me that you're an apostle? This is the way we have to prove it. Now, now look at the next one. And, they sh and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. We just said that. Now, look at the last one. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Okay, guys, this is the this is the question that my wife just posed upon the upon the scope just now. My wife just said that if Benny Hinn can heal, why isn't he? And, and the Bible says there are no apostles on earth right now. Miss Brittany, you're absolutely correct. There are no apostles on earth because nobody can go by those qualifications. Nobody. Come on, Miss Brittany. If you're a real apostle, I should be able to take you down to the hospital and you should heal every person that has a missing limb. You should be able to heal every person that has cancer. You should be able to heal every person that has blind eyes. And nobody's doing that. You know what they do? You, you know what they do? This is what, this is what they do when, it, when you put them to the test. They, they put it on you. They say, wait a minute, you didn't have enough faith. That's why you weren't healed. No, no, that's not what the verse says. Look, nowhere in the Mark 16 does it say that if they're not healed, that means that the person they were trying to heal didn't have enough faith. That doesn't exist. And so what I'm saying, if, if, you're, if you're a man of God has the power to heal, why is he healing everybody? Okay, and, and Miss Brittany, Miss Brittany, um, Paul, Paul did heal in the book of Acts. Peter did heal in the book of Acts. But what we're saying is, is that once the word of God was complete, there was no more need for, for apostles or healing because the healing and all the sign gifts were strictly to confirm the word of God. That's what they were for, okay? Now I'll prove that. Let's go to the bottom. Look at the bottom right here. And they, they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, and what? Confirming the word or just doing signs all by itself just because we can do the signs and wonders and miracles. No, they did the signs and wonders to confirm the word of God. You know why? We did not have a New Testament yet. And so God's word, was his revelation was still being completed. It was still being written down. It's practical. And so when the word of God was complete, the apostles weren't able to do any, any, any signs, wonders, and miracles anymore. And Paul proved it in the book of Timothy when he left Trophimus sick in Miletus. Paul, who had the gift of healing, left Trophimus sick in Miletus. How was is, how is he leaving Trophimus sick? Paul had the gift of healing. You see what I'm saying? That's the point. And these are the problem verses people got to deal with when they say that people can heal today. For problem one, if you can heal today, why aren't you in the hospitals healing everybody? Problem number two, if you can heal, that's not the only gift you're supposed to have. You're supposed to have the tongues. You say, oh, yeah, yeah, I got that. Okay, you're supposed to do the serpents. Oh, oh no, 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 no. See, you see what I'm saying? They pick and choose. They pick and choose the gifts that they want to have, right? No, the Bible says you don't pick and choose those. If you have the gifts, you have them all or you have nothing. Okay, so um, that's how we try an apostle, okay? So, uh, good question. And now, uh, really quick, uh, Miss Brittany, are you still there? Okay, okay, Miss Brittany, so uh, hopefully I answered your question on that. And that's just, that's just one way you can check them. There's other ways you can check them, too. We just went over one. Now, let me get back to the King James Bible thing. Um, Miss Brittany, would you turn your Bible 
to Acts chapter 8, verse 37. And could you tell me what it says? And, and I'll wait for you, okay? I'll be patient here and I'll wait for you. Okay, it, it'll be the book of Acts. So, so you'll be like New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and then Acts. That's spelled A-C-T-S. So when you go to the book of Acts, then turn to chapter 8, verse 37. Now, if you got an NIV, turn there. Any of you guys got NIVs, ESVs, RSVs? Turn to Acts 8, 37 and tell me what it says. Can anybody put it on the screen there for me, please? Just tell me what it says in a nutshell. Acts chapter 8, verse 37. I'm going to eat my chips, guys. <laughs> Floodgate. <laughs> okay, come on. Anybody else? Good job, Floodgate. Thanks for being honest. Anybody else? You know what has happened throughout the providence of Jude 8. No, Miss Brittany, what does Acts 837 say? Did you did you find it? Guys, I prayed before I eat ate these, okay? I prayed before the, sto the scope started, okay? So I don't want you to you know get your faith weakened because I didn't pray over my food, okay? Okay, Miss Brittany, one more time. Could you repeat that? I'm sorry. I know it's a lot to write, or maybe you're maybe you're using your microphone to do it. But repeat it one more time what it says. Yeah, I'm eating chips, Jaden. Barbecue. Amen. God is good. He gave man the ability to make chips. Amen. With 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 uh, ingredients that he he created, Amen. You know that has happened throughout the providence of Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism. No, um, are you in Acts chapter eight, verse thirty-seven? Because that's not even the context of Acts chapter eight. We're dealing with the Ethiopian eunuch. So, Acts, Acts chapter eight. Make sure it's eight, not seven or something like that, or nine. I try to be funny sometimes, but I think I fail miserably. Amen to chips. Amen. Right. Amen. God made God made man to be able to make this. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, Miss Brittany. If you got Acts 837, it should say something about the Ethiopian eunuch. It should say something about believing on the Son of God. Acts 837. Chapter 8, verse 37. Not 38, not 36, 37. And uh Flood, I think it's Floodgate had got his, and he gave orders. Yeah, 37. I need 37. What does 37 say? Yes, 37. Verse Acts chapter 8, verse 37. Okay, Miss Brittany, that's my point. Thanks for being honest with that. Um, you don't find a problem with that? You're missing 38? That's why you need a King James Bible. This is why God made a way for you to know which Bible's correct. It's got every every word of God is pure in this King James Bible. Do you, you know what's missing? You know what's missing in verse 37? That's so important that you need to know. I want to share it with you. I, ho I hope you guys stay on while I show you the verse, okay? We're going to go to King James Bible right now, okay? 
and I'm going to show you what Acts chapter 8, verse 37 actually says. Okay, here we go, guys. I'm turning there. I'm going to flip the screen so you guys can actually see it for yourself on my screen here, okay? Now, I'm going to start in verse 36. We're going to get context, and I'm going to read 36, 37, and 38, and you guys tell me if, it, if that verse is vitally important, okay? Here we go. Let's go to verse 36. And as they went out on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? Now here's our verse 37, okay? This is the one that's missing in all your Bibles. And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And the Ethiopian eunuch, look, and he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Look at the next verse. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and eunuch, and he baptized him. Guys, this verse right here is vitally important for salvation. We get saved by believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. We get saved by believing what he did on the cross for our sins. And this verse is missing. You guys don't see that as a problem? Why would you, why would you skip chapter 37? Because if you only read 36 and you only read 38, you know what you're missing? You're missing believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. All right, guys. I'm just saying, get yourself a King James Bible and you won't have verses taken out. That's, guys, how are you supposed to learn how the Ethiopian eunuch got saved when you don't know how he got saved? You're thinking he got baptized. Baptism saved him. And that's... That's another gospel. You're under the condemnation of Galatians 1. That's pretty serious, guys. Um, I, I, I'm telling you, um, God, made, God made loopholes in there so you would know which Bible to go to. That's what I, that's what I believe. I believe God made, God made a way for us to know which, true, which Bible is the true one. Now, Bible, if God said every word of God is pure, then there has to be a book out there that has every word of God that's pure in it. And it doesn't mean they all contradict. It doesn't mean that verses are taken out. It means there has to be one pure word of God. And I'm telling you, you got a King James Bible. It has no copyright in it. And, and there's, there, look, there's no endorsement in there. It's just the word of God. I mean, there's no copyright. Nobody, look, people sell King James Bibles. But if they sell the King James Bible in its original 1768 uh, version, the Cambridge, there's no copyright in there. That means nobody can add or take away anything in there. It's, it's as is. When the King James translators translate it, it's as is. But what, what does the NIV translators do? They add stuff in the text. What do the ESV translators do? They take away stuff in the text. What do the New King James translators do? They add stuff in the text. Guys, that's not honest, man. You've got to leave what's perfect, what's pure alone. And what happens when you don't? You end up with verses missing like Acts 8.37. It's crazy, guys. It's crazy. That's just one. That's just one of um, all those versions change at least five different parts in the Bible where somebody's getting saved and they change the words around. That's serious, guys. When you're messing, it's not just changing the these and the thous. They're changing. They're changing. Okay. Um, okay, you guys, you guys still there? Um, who, let me see who else is on here. Okay, everybody still there? Okay, if you got if you got another translation right now. Okay, yeah, yeah, you can ask him. Um, but I, I doubt it if he'll he'll even budge. Most pastors don't even care, and I'm telling you, most don't. And and I know that. And I've dealt with a lot of different pastors that they don't care. I mean, they don't believe in the King James. They don't believe in a, in, a, in an inspired, preserved Word of God, even though the Bible says that there is an inspired, preserved Word of God. Yeah, he might. I don't know. But the problem with that is if he's okay with all the other versions, that's where I, I would question, you know, his integrity in believing the King James Bible. Some people use it because it's the best reliable thing, and I don't agree with that either. I don't think the King James is, to, is the most reliable translation. I believe that it's complete, preserved, inspired word of God that God wanted us to have. And that would be the difference. And I'm not hateful about it. I mean, I'm willing to reason with anybody on here. So guys, that's just it in a nutshell. You don't got to agree with me. But if you don't agree with me, 
How can you believe verses like Psalm 12, 6 and 7, where it says he'll preserve the words, O Lord, from this generation forever? How do you believe verses like that when you know that God can't preserve his word? You say, God, you're God. You created from nothing something, but you can't preserve your word because, you know, I'm smarter than you, God, and I know you couldn't do it. Pretty much that in a nutshell. All right, guys. Good questions. Um, here's a thought. Open up your Bible to 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Now, you tell me, what does it say in the place of, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness? What would be the next word after that in your new translations? Can anybody share that with me? If you have, we're not talking, don't, don't tell me the King James, because I use the King James. Tell me, tell me what your version says. Why is everybody making fun of my head right now? That's not cool. I thought you guys weren't judgmental. I, got, I thought you guys wouldn't make fun of people. But then you guys always condemn me when I tell you you're going to end up in hell if you don't trust Jesus Christ. You guys are judging me right now. You know that, right? When you tell me not to judge. Did you just judge me, Mrs. XO? Did you just judge me? Get back to work. I'm not at work. Why are you judging me anyways? You, you, that, that, that's your heart full of bitterness. Jesus can forgive that stuff, you know. Uh, 1 Timothy 3.16 there, uh, Floodgate. Grow hair? Why, why don't you grow a heart and love Jesus Christ? Because people that have a heart won't, wouldn't say stuff like that. Hey, ain't? Why don't you use correct English? It's not all about Jesus. Who's it all about? You? Why am I obsessed about Jesus? Why are you obsessed about your sin? No, I don't want to block them. I want to, I'll, look, Jesus Christ died for your sins. He was buried and rose again the third day. And he did that because he loved you. He died on the cross for you guys. You guys want to use foul language, I'll block you, okay? There's no foul language on my periscope. Nope, that's not what it's supposed to say, Floodgate. God was manifest in the flesh. That's why you need a King James Bible. See, that uh, floodgate, that verse right there is the verse that I used to contend with Muslims. When Muslims try to attack the deity of Jesus Christ, I go to 1 Timothy 3.16 and I prove that Jesus is God. God was manifest in the flesh. And you know what they do? They take away God out of there. Uh-uh, that's a big no-no. You know what? Jesus had a heart. You don't. Amen. 1 John 5.20. Hey, everybody, listen to Ellis 1 right now. 1 John 5.20. He's the true God and eternal life. That's Jesus Christ. Yes, I did. I met Jesus. The moment I got saved, I met Jesus. How dare, you, how dare you judge me and say I never met Jesus? That's hateful and mean and judgmental. Why are you so racist, ma'am? Why are you a racist? And write God with a capital G. Jesus is God. Why are you judging me right now, Mrs. XO? You're judging me again. I'm deluded, Mia. Are you judging me and telling me I'm deluded? That's so hateful and mean. That's why I don't want to believe in your religion. Miss XO, I don't want to believe in your religion either. Jesus is a human. No, he was fully God and fully man. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. You are crazy? Uh, I won't block you for that one. You, st you start calling me names, you start getting foul, I'll, I will block you. Islam... 
Oh, so you believe in pedo pedophilia? Are you are, are you a, are, do you, do you, do you condone pedophilia, Muhammad the pedophile? You condone Muhammad the pedophile? Um, yeah, yeah, we're not having that. OMGs, unacceptable. Muhammad wasn't only a false prophet, but he was a pervert. He he, he believed in pedophilia, raping little six-year-old, seven-year-old girls. That's wicked. Why would I believe in a religion like that? Come on, guys. You think I never learned about Islam? I know what you guys believe. Come on. Wrong. Wrong. You don't know. You don't know what. You don't. You don't even know what Muhammad did in his life, do you? Have you ever read? Have you ever read the Quran? And you still condone what Muhammad did? You still condone what Muhammad did? A G G Z. You condone that? I better keep my daughter away from you. Bunch of perverts, man. I'm not a priest. I'm not a priest. I'm not a Catholic. So don't even go there. I, I disagree with priests raping little boys. That's wicked, man. And you know Muhammad? He's wicked, man. That guy, that guy should have repented of all that wickedness. And you know what he did? He had all them wives. It's wicked, man. All them wives are little girls, man. Raping them, man. Raping them. And, and, and saying, we can do that. Sex slaves, we can do that, and you guys, you guys support that. Yes, Mina, man, you, you, you just got darkness in your heart. You need to repent, and trust in Jesus Christ, man. You're wicked, man. Jesus Christ can take that bitterness out of your heart. Wrong, Aisha, Aisha. How old was Aisha? Come on, man. Don't talk to me like I'm stupid, man. <laughs> I, uh, uh, yes, Mina, it just shows you're a pervert, just like Muhammad is. I thought women actually had some sense in Islam. But you know what? A woman that can convert to Islam shows she has no sense. She doesn't understand what the Quran teaches. You're a fool. That's what you are. You're a fool. And you need to be rebuked for that. You need to trust in Jesus Christ and repent of all that foolishness. Oh, Mrs. XO, ain't you so cute telling people they're rude as all you've been doing? Yeah, right. Not right. See, see how it works? Why, why is it okay for you to judge me? Why is it okay for you to judge me? Islam is the right religion. Burn in hell. Oh, wow. Oh, yes, Mina said Islam is the right religion. Oh, I'm persuaded. Oh, she persuaded me. She told me to burn in hell. Oh, that makes me want to repent and believe in Islam. Not. <laughs> Guys. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by Jesus Christ. Guys, telling me that I'm wrong doesn't convince me. <laughs> Jesus is God. Okay, another question whenever you're done. Right, right. Go ahead and ask your question, Miss Brittany. This is garbage. This is all Muslim garbage, man. It's all Muslim stuff, man. Muslims have no love. People always try to say Muslims have love, and look at all this hate I'm getting on here. Not... Go ahead, Miss Brittany, ask your question. Hey, look at Mrs. XO. She's so hateful. I didn't avoid that comment. Okay, what does the Illuminati have to do with things? <laughs> Good one, Miss Brittany. Good one. Um, nothing. Nothing. People try to make conspiracy theories and they try to uh, make something out of the Bible that's not even there. And so all I all I would say is, uh, Miss Brittany, all we need to do is look towards the blessed hope, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and just keep your eyes focused on him. Don't worry about the conspiracy theories of the Illuminati and the one world order and the one world currency. Don't even worry about that stuff. Right. Just just keep your eyes focused in the scriptures. God said he's got a handle. You know, when the second coming of Jesus Christ comes, not the rapture, but the second coming, God will destroy all people that hate Israel. God will destroy them all. Because you know what happens in Armageddon? All the countries are going against Israel to, to wipe them off of the map. And you, and you know and you know what God's going to do? Jesus Christ is going to come down on a white horse and destroy all the nations that go up against Israel. So, no, God's got it covered. We don't have to worry about the Illuminati or nothing. So, amen.
Hey, man. Hopefully some questions were answered. I know we're off topic. I'm just having fun right now. Watching Muslims hate on me. Wow, what does AMDN mean? What is all that? Don't call your mom? What does that mean? Oh, these are uh, barbecue. Barbecue chips. Uh-uh. Oh, -uh. Uh, real dimsy. Bye-bye. Look, I'll let you guys get away with a lot of stuff, man. But there ain't gonna be no cursing. There gonna be no foul language on my Periscope. I told you guys that. Yep. Bye-bye. Anybody else want to use some foul language? I hear famous people like Beyonce and Illuminati. Right. And I don't know, you know, a lot of that's just propaganda. You don't know if that stuff's true, you know. And so I would just, just believe the Bible. Don't worry about the, the tabloids and the, the, the stuff on there. Just as long as you, as long as you believe your Bible. Of course I'm bold. Because I got Jesus Christ to make me bold. He's the only way, guys, for your soul. You need to believe on him to be saved from your sins. And if you don't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, guys, you're going to die in your sins. Okay, calling names. Nope, not going to have it. You guys can ask questions. All this name calling, all this racial remarks, we're not going to have it, man. So why should you believe? Because Christ has proven his love to you. That's why you should believe. He died. He physically came down and he died for you. Nobody can dispute the historical fact that Jesus really came to earth. He really existed. Anybody that denies the his historicity of Jesus Christ is a fool. Pretty much. That's why you need to believe on him. We need to talk. Fool. Yeah, you're a fool. You don't believe on Jesus, it's foolish. I'm uh, sorry. Bye-bye. Yeah. Um, okay, do you know what happens? You know what? Oh, I missed you. I missed you. Say that again. Yeah, there you go. Say that again. There you go. Yeah, I ain't having that, man. You know, you know, you know, you know what happened? Okay. You know what? You know what happens. Okay, thanks. Do you do, guys? Do you know what happens when you when you blaspheme the name of Muhammad? Do you, you know what happens? You get killed. It's called the blasphemy law in Sharia law. Does anybody here know about Sharia law? If you know about Sharia law, blasphemy against Muhammad is death. And you know what you guys are doing? You're using the F word to, to describe my Jesus, and and nobody's killing you. But you know what? You're not going to do it on my periscope. Jesus saves. He died for your sins, guys. There's no... See, why do people get mad at Jesus? He gave you no reason to be mad at him. Why? Can anybody give me one good reason why you shouldn't believe on Jesus Christ? Give me one good reason why you should not believe on Jesus Christ. Logical reason, mind you. Bye-bye. Why are you on here anyways? Bye-bye. Jesus is a prophet. Like a serious convo. Right. Yeah, serious conversation. That's good. I mean, you can ask questions and stuff. But if you want to just say stupid stuff, I'll block you, man. I don't, I don't need that, man. I mean, there's people on here that are sincere. They won't really want to know answers to some questions. Um, you could call yourself a realist, but the realist, the realism should bring you straight to Jesus Christ in a one-way direction, because Jesus Christ really came down and He died for your sins. He was buried and rose again the third day. And any realist would study all the information, not just their own biased side. Bye bye. Um, anybody else want to use some foul language against my Jesus? I'll block you. Right. And and yeah. Uh, okay. Okay, Ms. Exo, you're, you're, see, you're being, see, I know you could be reasonable sometimes on here. And so, so here, here's, here's the answer. Here's the answer. The Bible says that we're all born in this body of flesh, all of us. 
And we're all, all of us are going to die because of Adam's sin, Romans chapter 5, verse 12. But the, but the problem is, Jesus said that if you want to continue in, in the spirit of what this flesh is headed for, then your spirit's going to die with your flesh. And, and, and the difference between your flesh dying is your flesh is going to go into the ground being eaten by worms, but your soul, which is your spirit, is going to head straight for hell to suffer eternal death. Where the Bible says, where the worm dieth not. So that, that's a kind of different kind of worm eating that. See what I'm saying? But if you believe on Jesus Christ, here's the difference. Then your body still dies, but your soul, which is your spirit, is saved forever. That's the difference. And the only way to have that is if you believe what Christ did on the cross for your sins and that he was buried and rose again the third day. Hopefully that makes sense, guys. Well, I read the Bible in about a month, one, one year, and it's possible for you to do it. No, it hasn't, Mrs. XO. No, it hasn't. Have you did a study on the history of how we got our King James Bible? I have. Um, I know the answer to all that. And, 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 and what I'm saying is if you're unbiased, you would study all the information instead of what you read on the Internet. Um, yeah, I was going to do a King James Version class. And, uh, but the problem is, Miss XO, I don't think you'd have patience enough to sit through the class. Or would you? Or would you? Islam is a lie. I wouldn't want to believe on a pedophile like Muhammad. No, thank you. Pedophilia, man. Muhammad all the way. When you guys say Muhammad, you, instead of saying blessed be his name, say Muhammad, you are a pedophile. 